All right, let's go ahead and add some Tailwind so that our site actually looks a little bit nicer. And we're going to actually steal some component, well not steal, but we're going to use some components that some other people have gratefully open sourced. So first things first, we need to go to our base.html and in here we need to add some sort of CSS. And in order to do that, let's open up a new tab and go to Tailwind CSS. And let's go and get started. And installation. Is there a CDN in here? We don't want to do the whole front end stuff. We just want the CDN. And this is no way to live your life in production, by the way, because Tailwind is a very, very big CSS file. But while you're doing some local work, this is totally okay. Now let's go ahead and see what our page looks like now. Okay, is that a lot of resetting? A lot, a lot of resetting. Uh, so that's actually not a bad thing. We can now add anything we want to it. So let's go ahead and add some sort of navigation. Now I know for a fact that I want this particular navigation. And all I did was to find this to type into Google Tailwind components and I found a navigation that I really, really like. And so this is our navigation in here. And what I want to do here is show the code. This is all the code. I'm going to copy all of that. And let's do this. Um, let's push everything to the bottom for now. And put that up top. And what else do we have in here? Do we have anything else? Oh, we have CSS that comes with it. Let's move that up into our head where it's supposed to be. And let's just say the component is from this particular link so that they are getting credit for it. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, not bad, not bad. Uh, we, we don't want all of these. And we want some sort of content area in here as well. So let's, let's start looking through some of this. Logo, let's change that logo from logo to TIL, stands for Today I Learned. Uh, dashboard, this link can go straight to the home. Perfect. Um, what else do we need? We need login, logout links. So let's get rid of all these ones between the home and logout, 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 logout. And all I did was just delete a bunch of stuff there. So now we have logout, login, or not login, but home and logout. Let's add login because we don't know if we're currently logged in or not. That's how people tell. They say, they see a link, and if they see a logout link, they go, I'm logged in. If they see a login link, they go, oh, I'm logged out. Okay, so we can do that pretty easily. With that logout link, what we can do is if authenticated, and if, so if the user is authenticated, show a logout link. And where does that logout link go? We wrote this in a couple of less, uh, we wrote this a couple of lessons ago, log out. Let's just go ahead and steal that. Put it right in there. Then we can say, if the user is not logged in, otherwise they're logged out, we could take this whole thing, copy and paste, and instead of account log out, we want log in, and we want this to say log in. Login. And this goes down to our login page. It looks like we did nothing just because we don't have a content area in here yet. Uh, let's also change this icon. Because when we log in and log out, currently the icons are the exact same. So do we have an icon in here somewhere? Uh, yes, I class BX, BX log out. Let's do log in. There we go, that just switched it. Let's do that again. Undo, and I'll refresh just over here on the left side. There we go. That works pretty good. Uh, you could always just Google as well, box icons. Let's do this. Box icons CSS. Oh, there we go, box icons. And so we could use any icon that we want in here. That's pretty cool. These are nice icons too, I like these. Might use these in a future project of mine. 
Okay, so that's all good. We now need a content area. And so at this point, we might want to zip up some stuff here. So we've got flex, coal, width, 56, yada, yada, yada. Let's try this. Div. My stuff here. Ah, there it is. Let's add some padding. Class. P-16. There we go, that looks a little better. And then we can throw all of our content in there. So let's scroll back on down and let's get rid of the stuff we're no longer using. We're using the login logout links. We don't need that anymore. We don't need that HR anymore. Uh, we do need the body and content in there. And we can just move that up. There we go. So this doesn't look really great. Uh, honestly, I'm not gonna show you exactly how it, uh, just because that is a complete front end course on its own. But what you can do is you can always just inspect and say, hey, I need to style these H1s differently. And you can use Tailwind H1s, or you can overwrite the template and add classes to it if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and log in. And I'm now logged in, and I can now go and log out if I wanted to. And so we simply added Tailwind with a nice little navigation on the left. Don't forget at any point in time, you can always check out the source code. I have been making commits along the way so you can see just the, the code that I changed in each individual lesson. All right, let's go ahead and make our posts look nice using Tailwind CSS. Now I already found a particular component that I really want to use. And so what I'm gonna do is just on my other monitor here, I'm just gonna copy this link and go on down and paste. And this is what I want a post to look like. Now, here's the thing is, we're not gonna have all the details right away. We're gonna have to go and add those in in just a little bit. We don't know who wrote what, we don't know if there's a detail link, uh, we don't have categories, we don't have titles either. It's literally just text. So how do we, how do we add this? Let's go ahead and just copy all of that code. And you can see the code in here. I simply copied all of it. And what I can do is go into my feed and where is every post being posted or where is it being displayed? It's being displayed on our homepage. So let's go ahead, make some room for us to work here and just paste that in there. And let's say that this component is from that link. Now, this is going to change these three ugly posts to look all the same, but we can modify those. And this actually doesn't look too bad, does it? I, I like this quite a bit. So what we can do, first of all, is that date. Let's change that date. We know that every post has a date uh, item on it, or a date attribute, date property. Okay, that works a little bit better. Let's say we didn't want it to say the full date, though. We can do pipe date. Uh, and let's do F, J, Y, G, I, A, A. And I'll show you where I got that in just a second. Uh, so, where I got that weird F, J, Y, G, I, A is from php.net date. And let's go to the date manual. And I might be on the wrong page, but I found an example that works nonetheless. Uh, so here's the one that I used. Uh, and that's actually one that I tend to use on a lot of my projects. Mine's very similar. Um, you can use MDY and it shows you like month, day, year. You can sh it'll, it'll show you examples of what all of these can do. So it's just the PHP date manual. Let's do date formats. Let's, let's see what this does. Mm, yeah, no, not quite. The first example was better. Let's just pretend I didn't show you that one. I right, have a title. So let's go ahead and get rid of that title. Where are you? And we also don't have category. So I'm just gonna comment out that category. So it doesn't say design in there anymore. We don't have a title in there as well. So let's go ahead and cut out that title. 
and our post is supposed to look something like this, post.text. And that actually made our posts a lot smaller than anticipated. Uh, so what we can do here is, let's see. Uh, the whole thing, let's just give this like a, a width. We can do this in Tailwind as well, but this particular module Django 201 is not a Tailwind course. Uh, so we're focusing more on the Django side of things than we are the Tailwind side of things. But we still need things to look like. We still need things to look nice. So let's go ahead and save that. That looks a little bit better. Uh, let's add some to-dos in here. The read more. We don't know where that's supposed to go yet. So before we finish up this module, we're going to look through uh, basically all of our source code for a to-do. To-do. Add a detail. URL. And what else do we need in here? We need this user to be different. And so let's add another to do in here. To do user needs a link to their bio and a photo and a thumbnail and a name. So needs quite a bit. So instead of like saying, hey, yeah, we're going to do this all in the next lesson, because that next lesson could probably be 30, 40, 50 minutes long. I don't actually know. Uh, instead, we're going to create a little to-do, which is just saying, hey, future us, when we, whenever we see this, just know that we need to take a look for this to-do, or we need to find a to-do, and we need to read what it's telling us to do. So it's a way of keeping track of your code. Now, if your to-do doesn't highlight like mine, that's okay. I am using an extension called to do tree called uh yeah it's called to do tree is by grunt fugly so for now honestly this is working this is working as well as we want it to work all we really wanted to do was add a nice little component in here okay let's go ahead and add profiles because right now we don't have user profiles and that's one of the things that we needed to add in the last lesson. We just don't have them. Let's go ahead and create them. And so all we have to do here is do Python manage to pi start app and let's call this profiles. And we see a new folder in here. Let's go into our settings and activate that. So we go into our installed apps. I'm going to call it profiles because that's what it's called profiles. And then in our models.py, we can create a new profile model. So let's do class profile, and this is going to be a user profile. It takes models.model as its inherit inheritance. User is going to be some sort of link back to the regular user object. Now, if that was a little bit confusing, uh, let's close up a few of these things first. We have users. And with these users, maybe we want to use the first name and the last name, but you don't see a place to upload an image in here. And so we need to extend that. And so one way to do this in Django, and there's usually a few ways to do things in any framework, uh, but one way is to simply create another model, such as the one called profile, and link the original user to this profile. And so that's what we're going to end up doing. And so we say the user is equal to models dot one to one field. And this is going to take a Django user, which we'll import in just a second. On delete is equal to models dot cascade. So when we delete that user, also delete this profile. And let's give this a related name of profile. In fact, actually, let's not give this a related name just yet. So what I'm going to do is comment this out. And we need to from that user. So let's do from Django.contrib.auth.models. I can't ever remember this one. Import user. Let's see if Django complains about that. Ah, no complaints. Good, good, good. Let's go ahead and make migrations. Created a profile for us. Migrate. And let's register this in our admin. So let's take a look at what we've already done. We've done this with feed slash admin. So let's just copy all that. Close that down and go into profiles admin. And let's just read through this one line at a time. We need the admin module from models 
uh, what do we have in here? Models. There's no post model in here. It's not called post. It's called profile. And so instead of post admin, we're going to call it profile, profile admin. And let's refresh in here and we're going to see, wait for it, we're going to see, wait for it, profiles. Now there is no profile yet. So what we can do is we can manually attach a profile here. Let's, so let's create a new profile here and that user is going to be Caleb and that user is going to link to this particular user. And so there's always going to be a one-to-one -one relationship here. So every time there's a user, there should be a profile. And every time there's a profile, there should be a user. Oh, look at that. Profile object doesn't have a proper name. Let's go ahead and add that proper name. Glad that showed up. Def underscore underscore string underscore underscore self return self dot user dot username. And just wait for that to load. And there we go. So there's actually no point to having this at this point in time, but we are going to extend the user by adding a profile, which can then or some sort of image. Let's go ahead and re-enable that related name profile. And let's see if this makes another migration. Doesn't ever hurt to check to see if you need to make a new migration. So it did. Let's go ahead and migrate that. And we are good to go. Now, one last thing we want to do here is we want to add this thing called a signal. And so the idea here is every time we create a new user, also create a new profile automatically. And what a signal does, it's a lot like a webhook or a hook in React. Or if you come from the land of JavaScript, it's a lot like a callback. So when a user is created, we can take a particular action. And so that is called a signal in Django. So let's do def create user profile. We're going to ask for the sender or not ask, but receive, I guess the sender, the inst, the instance created and keyword args. And if you're ever wondering more about signals, cause this course is not going to go too deep into signals, the Django docs are a great place to start. And so let's add a doc string in here, create a new profile object, object, when a Django user is created. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and say, if created is true, profile.objects.create user, that's up here. So profile.user is equal to the new user instance. And in order for this to work, we need to register this as a receiver to receive that signal. Post save, and that sender is going to be user. And so what we're saying here is, think of it like a signal out in space. And we have a giant satellite dish, and we're trying to receive signals. Then we're looking for a particular type of signal. We're looking for a post save. So once the user is saved, or once an object is saved, rather, we're saying, check to see what kind of data is coming in. So if that data is a user and it was just saved, execute this. And so we need to now do, 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 import receiver and post save. We don't need to import user because we already have user. So we need to import receiver and save or post save rather. So from django.db.models.signals, import post save. Nope. Post save. There we go. And from Django, I'm really stretching my memory here from Django dot dispatch import receiver. Ah, Django didn't complain. Cool. So now we can go ahead and create a new user and ideally it would create a new profile as well. So let's go back into our admin. Let's create a new user. Test, put a password in there and let's just save. Let's go into profiles. There it is. It automatically created it for us. So it automatically creates a profile every single time we create a new user. And that just keeps that one-to-one -one relationship existent.
So as a quick recap, what we did was we said, hey, every user needs to have a profile attached to it. We haven't added anything in particular yet, except that one-to-one -one field that really connects that user to that profile. Then we said every profile should be called uh, self.user.username, whatever that username is. So it's saying self go over to that user, that Django user. We know that every Django user has a username and use that as a representation for its, its name, its object name. Then we said every time a user is saved, execute this function, create user profile. It's going to accept the sender our sender here. Our instance is going to be the user instance. So if I created a new user called test, it's going to send that test user as instance. Check to see if that object was created and then a bunch of keyword arguments that we don't need to worry about. If a new user was created after post save, then we can say profile.objects.createUser is equal to that instance. And that just creates a new profile for us every time a new user is generated. And we learned about receivers and signals and how a signal is like a radio frequency out in space and how a receiver is like your satellite dish. All right, let's go ahead and install a thumbnailing library. So let's just close this down from our last lesson. And we need to do a few things to install this. So first of all, we need to find a library to work with. So what I'm going to do is just open up my browser and type in Django thumbnailing package. And we can go to djangopackages.org and look through a bunch of them. There's Django thumbnails, Django thumbnail maker. We're going to use Sorrel thumbnail because I'm familiar with this one. I've used it uh, in Django 101. If you took Django 101, you used it as well. Uh, so we know that it works. And we need to go down into installation. Get the code. This is what we do. Pip install Sorrel thumbnail, or because we're using pip env, we can do it a slightly different way. We can get out of our pip env and we can do pip env install Sorrel thumbnail. And we just give that a quick second to yeah, do it. Alrighty, that is done. So we can do pip env shell and do pip pip show sorrel thumbnail. And there it is. Now, if you're not using pip env, you can always just do pip install sorrel thumbnail. You can actually do that inside of a pip env as well. It just won't add it to your pip file or your pip file dot lock. Now, how do we install this thing? We add sorrel dot thumbnail, not just sorrel, which we usually do with the Django package, uh, just the name of the package, we're going to do the name of the package and then a folder in there. And that's, that's how we're going to enable this. So let's go back over to VS code. And let's open up settings.py and just somewhere in here, toss in sorrel.thumbnail. And we should see that Django restarts. We have an unapplied migration. Let's go ahead and run that migration. Python man manage.py migrate. And this just applied thumbnail 0001 initial. And that's from sorrel.thumbnail. Now, how do we actually use this? Model usage, this is what we want. We want from sorrel.thumbnail import image field and then use image is equal to image field and then upload to wherever we want it to upload to. And that's going to be inside of our media folder. So it, it could create a subfolder on inside of our media folder called whatever. I think we're going to skip this. We're just going to use this part here. So let's go ahead and open up our profiles, models, and we want to add this right in here. And then we can write this right there. Image is equal to image field that's coming from sorrel.thumbnail and upload to wherever. Let's call this profile. As I said, maybe we'll, we'll skip it, but maybe let's not so we can see what it's actually doing and where it's going. And now you can see that Django is complaining. Django actually says that uh, we cannot use the image field because pillow is not installed. So we have to go and install pillow. So let's get out of pip env again, pip env install pillow with a capital P. All right, let's go back into our pip env. And let's say pip show pillow. And this is just going to show us that it was in fact installed. We don't have to verify every single time. I like to verify just to make sure just because I have multiple versions of Python and lots of weird Python pathing on my computer. 
I just want to make sure that Pillow is actually installed properly. Now if we go over to this terminal and we simply restart Django, we won't see any more errors. We won't see any more complaints. So this is good news. Now at this point we can go and edit our user profile. So let's go into our admin and let's go to profiles. And it says, oh no, oh, no such column. Well, what we did was we ran a migration for Sorrel thumbnail, but we didn't make a migration and then run that migration for our new field on our profile. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do python manage.py make migrations. And because we're saying that it cannot be null or blank, we have to provide a one-off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you that I'm going to type one to provide a one-off default. And because we don't have an image, I'm just going to type the number one. And that's good enough for what we have now. Let's go ahead and make those migrations and then run those migrations. And let's head back over to our browser, refresh, and we can see that this works. Cool, 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 cool. So this image says currently one. If I click this, first of all, it goes to localhost, port 8000 slash one, not in a media folder, we haven't set that up yet. And the image is just what we typed. So even if folder set up, which we don't, this still isn't going to show an image, there's no image called just one, it's usually like one jpeg one png one dot whatever. And that just isn't here. And so that's what that one did. What we can do instead is we can say browse. And we could select like animated jpeg and save and continue editing and watch this. This goes into profiles animated. Now this still isn't going to be found and that's normal. Notice it did create a folder called profiles and then it uploaded the image for us. So that's all we're going to do for this particular lesson. Coming up, we're going to be working on actually getting this to work by adding our media URLs. Okay, so we don't have our media URL set up yet. We need to do that. Uh, the reason we do that is because basically it tells Django where to upload all of our files to. Now, if we look, if we look at this in our left hand column here, uh, there's already a folder called profiles. And so it just added animated.jpg to it. And that's me as an animated character. My friend Steve made that for me. So we don't want that we want all of these images to actually go into its own folder called media. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this, because it doesn't belong there. And no harm done if you delete it, because we currently don't have working image URLs anyways. So first things first, let's close this down. And let's go into our settings.py. And that's somewhere, I don't know, I guess near the top, let's just do this. We need a media root. Media root is equal to something. os.path.join. And then the base dire that's coming from line 16 just above us. And a folder called media. And then we're going to say that media URL, how that should be served, is going to be slash media with a slash at the end. Now that's not quite enough to get us there. We also need to go into our Django URLs, our URLs. And we need to first of all, include our settings because we're going to be using that media URL. So we do from django.conf import settings. And we're going to need to import one more in here. Uh, and this is going to come from conf.urls.static, I believe. Uh, let's just copy that over. So I don't have to type it all again, static. And we want to include static. Now again, that's still not enough. All we did was import some stuff, we actually need to add it to our URL patterns. So what we can say here is URL patterns plus static, and then we want that settings dot media URL. And the document root is going to be settings.media root. And what this is going to do is say, hey, for your static URLs, while you're running on localhost, not in production, because you don't want to serve your media files through Django in production, that's not safe. Uh, but for what we're doing here, that's totally okay. We're going to say connect that media URL with that media root. And let's go back and take a look at that. 
that media URL slash media, so yourwebsite.com slash media, with that media root, that, that folder that we're going to end up creating. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's go back to Firefox. And we can close that one down. Let's just refresh this page. Looks like nothing changed. But if I re-upload animated, save and continue editing, it looks again like nothing changed, but this URL now changed. This URL, A, shows up, and B says localhost port 8000 slash media slash profile slash animated. It has that media in there, and that profiles is coming from, if we go to profiles models, it's coming from right there. And so now we can actually see on the left-hand side, in our folders, we have media, and then profiles, and then animated.jpg. Now, if we do a get status, this get status is going to show us that we can add media to our repository, and we don't want that. So we want to open up our git ignore, and I usually just toss this at the bottom somewhere. I just type media slash, and then if we do another git status here, uh, we can see that media doesn't show up. So we do git add, git commit, and then you can do your regular git commit. And that simply is just not going to commit your all of your images to your repository. Because if you have 20, 30, 40, 50 people working on a repository and they're all adding their own test images, that repo is going to get really, really big and you're going to download their files every time you do a git pull. And it's just, it's not a place you want to be living in. So uh, that's really all there is to that. Let's do a quick little recap though. To add our media URL, we add a media root and a media URL. Then we go to our urls.py, we import static, we import settings, and then we say URL patterns plus static. And then we connect that media URL with a document root, which is going to point to media root.